And here we go. Welcome to the Great Work Insights Podcast by the OC Tanner Institute, the show that features the people, the professionals, the thought leaders, and the coolest companies. And now your host, the man navigating the discussion about the culture, the organized chaos, and the best practices that compel great work, Todd Nordstrom. Comedian Jim Carrey, known to the world for movies like Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, Dumb and Dumber, The Mask, and one of my favorites, The Truman Show, never appeared like he was the guy we should be taking life advice from. But when a speech he gave to graduating class at Maharishi University of Management went viral, we were all able to see, hear, and actually feel what one of the world's most successful comedians had to say about the higher purpose in what we do. Carrie, in his speech to graduates, talks about how he would fall down the stairs of his childhood home to get laughs from guests. He would talked about his father. Um, he had an enviable sense of humor as well, and how his dad took a safer route in life. Instead of pursuing a career as a stand-up comedian, his father became an accountant. Carrie's speech, if you haven't heard it, is well worth watching. It will make you cry. It will make you laugh. But more than anything else, the speech will make you think. In Carrie's speech, he relays some of the things he learned from his father. Of the most profound things he mentions, this quote got me thinking when Jim said, the effect you have on others is the greatest currency there is. Now that's a, that's a difficult concept for most of us to grasp. Yeah, we get it, we understand it, but how do we practice that? How do we affect people? It's funny, actually, research we've been doing recently at the O.C. Tanner Institute has led me into numerous conversations with people from all sorts of industries and professions around the globe. And I found it fascinating that when I ask people about the impact or effect they have on the lives of others, I rarely get a response. In fact, it's typically a, a, a blank stare on the receiving end of the question. But if I switch that question around, switch the scenario and ask people about the times in life in school or at work where they've been recognized, a light bulb appears. And I hear responses about how meaningful it was when a certain person recognized them for a talent or trait or behavior. Think about those times in your life when you've been recognized. My guest today is no stranger to these conversations about appreciation and recognition. Jeff Burke, manager of speaking and training at OC Tanner, um, has these conversations all day long, every day. Jeff travels the globe speaking about and training managers about the power of appreciation at work. Jeff, welcome to the show. Hey, Todd. Thanks for having me. Hey, I want to talk to you about the words of uh, Jim Carrey, about how he said the effect you have on others is the greatest currency there is. But before we get into that, I, um, I want you to share with the listener a more detailed description of what it is you do day in and day out. Cool. I uh, I get the uh, pleasure of uh, actually going into groups of people, particularly leaders and managers, and basically teaching them how to say thank you to their people. Uh, in, in a nutshell, that's that's what I get to do. I do that by way of keynote presentations that can last anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes uh, to, to half-day trainings sometimes and in front of groups of 20 to sometimes, you know, 400, 500 or more people. And so so when I do these, I make sure uh, and, and that, that everybody comes away with three things. First of all, I want them to be informed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we do that by giving them statistics and data that, that really – talk about how appreciation and establishing these cultures of appreciation recognition uh, are not only going to help you culturally, but they're also going to add financially to your bottom line. And we've got statistics to back that up. So I want them to be informed. That's number one. But number two, uh, I want them to be in inspired. And uh, I do that by way of sharing personal experiences and stories that we have gleaned from our years, gosh, 87 plus years as a company doing this and doing what we do. Um, And so after I have had a chance to inform them and inspire them, typically the third I comes in, and that's when they leave wanting to improve, improve upon the way they have been doing recognition or simply start to do it for for some people that I talk to. So so that's, that's kind of what I do, Todd. 
That's, you know, when you say the word teach, it sounds so technical and functional. Jeff, you're also a stand-up comedian. You've appeared on many stages. Um, you've opened for Jay Leno, Martin Short, and the list can go on for numerous um, high-profile comedians across the country. I know you. I know you're a guy who understands the emotion words create. When you go into companies or conferences to talk about something like appreciation or recognition, how important is it that people feel what you're talking about rather than just comprehend what you're talking about? Yeah, no, that's a really good point because, I mean, put yourself in the shoes of, of pretty much any attendee out there that finds out they have to sit through a three-hour training. Mm -hmm. And to back, you know, to, to add to that, oh, it's going to be on how to appreciate your people. Oh, boy, great. Three hours of touchy, feely, fuzzy stuff that usually should be just an HR function. And, you know, it's taking me away from the really important stuff I've got to do. I've got, uh, you know, PE ratios and balance sheets and quarterly numbers and all sorts of stuff to, to talk about. So what I do, Todd, is I make sure and start off uh, in, in a way that, that lets everybody know that there, this isn't going to be a, a death by PowerPoint experience at all. So I'm, I'm, I'm throwing a few jokes right there at the front. I'm getting really uh, friendly with people, interactive, and, and that puts everybody at ease right away. But then right after that, it's when I start with these these stories, uh, both horror stories and good stories about recognition that's done in a terrible way, or recognition that can be done, uh, you know, in, in 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 good ways. Because you know, it's it's like when I was on stage doing comedy, and I still do a little bit, not as much as I used to. I, I don't want people, for example, to hear a joke. And think to themselves, oh, well, hmm, that's that's funny. I I, I concur with that statement. <laughs> you, you want more than that, right? You want you, you want laughter. You want action. You don't want them just to uh, understand it. You want them to have a deep inner uh, understanding, not just in their mind, but also in their hearts. And so that's what we're really going for when when uh, when I'm doing these keynotes and when I'm doing these workshops. Uh, you're, you're in front of so many people in so many different places on a nonstop basis. Um, and when you describe, you know, what you just said, it's about getting people to feel what recognition and appreciation means. Truly, you have some some stories. Can you share a story with us about somebody in an audience or something that that felt it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, um, I, I was uh, doing a workshop at a hospital a couple of years ago. And this was for all of their leaders. There were probably about 70 people in the room. And, and uh, you know, I get started doing my thing. And, and uh, you know, the CFO, I didn't know it at the time, but she was sitting on the back row. Mm -hmm. And so I got done with the three-hour thing, and, and she was one of the first people that came up to me. And, and she said, I was coming into this three-hour session prepared to gouge my eyes out <laughs> with my pen out of boredom. And she said, this is the best training I've ever been to. And and that as a presenter and as a workshop facilitator, that made me feel really really good. But as you know, as far as the emotional impact, I'll never forget uh, doing another training at a at a different hospital on the other side of the country, where um, we had this exercise where everybody writes a thank you note, and it it comes off really really well if you write a thank you card to somebody that's in the room that you typically work with, mm -hmm. and then to kind of get people in the mode of how to do a good presentation when it comes to recognizing somebody for doing a piece of great work. We have them, if they want to, come up to the front of the room and we do a mock presentation and, and they have their person come up and they can read the card to them. They can paraphrase it or whatever. So I have this one guy come up. He's an ambulance driver. He's from the Bronx. He lived through the 9-11 thing and was an ambulance driver during that whole thing. And now he's working down in a hospital in the southern part of the United States. He comes up and invites uh, a guy that he works with in the Breast Cancer Institute up, one of his best friends. And as he's reading this card to him, he starts to get emotional. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he makes it through the card and, and thanks him for the wonderful things that he does. And they're up there hugging each other. And so we're done and we're ready for another one. And then what happened, Todd, is his friend says, now, wait a minute. you got to stay up here because I wrote my card about you. Oh, wow. And we had to go through the whole thing over again. The tears <laughs> are coming, you know, and the emotion. But when, when people are taught that this is so much more than a nice thing to do, that it's a necessary thing to do, that's when they really start to realize that my goodness, uh, this stuff can have a huge, huge impact on our culture, and we need to do it better. We need to start doing it for some companies, and uh, you really start to see the boat turn uh, if, if that's uh, if that's where you're at. 
Jeff, I, I, I listened to you tell that story and it makes me um, think back to Jim Carrey's comment about the impact or effect we have on other people. Let me ask you personally, as a guy who's spent years on stages and in front of groups, did you expect the kind of response you get when you're out speaking about recognition and appreciation? Do you, ex I mean, do you expect this kind of emotional response? Well, Todd, every every group is different, but there's one thing that is common among every single group that I'm in front of. This can be a group of eight executives all the way to, you know, a group of 200 associates or employees. Um, everybody knows that this stuff is important and that it plays a role. It's just that they don't know the significance of it. I mean, you know, in all of our studies that we have done, it, it, they, they show us that this this whole appreciation and recognition concept it's the number one thing that employees say will cause them to create great work. Mm -hmm. And in, in specific, we've got one particular study that shows that 79% of people, they say that lack of appreciation is the reason they leave their job. It's just amazing to me. But, you know, on the other hand, so many of us refuse to accept that these studies are talking about us. Oh, this must be John over in accounting. He's a total – uh, you know, he just he just can't do appreciation or or my boss isn't the kind of guy that does this well. Uh, you know, the most recognition he gives out is the end of year review. And, you know, if we get any of that, then he's also telling us what we need to improve on. You know, so so people never realize that, hey, when you're pointing the finger, just remember that there are three fingers pointing back to you. Yeah. And for example, think of it this way, Todd, if I said right now, that heart disease is the number one killer of Americans. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many Americans would seriously change what they eat for lunch? It's just, it's just typically not going to happen. And so no. until we all realize that we're all, you know, we're all, we're all the people being studied. Usually when we're personally affected by something until that happens, we're not going to change. Yeah. It's, it's so true. I mean, like that whole heart disease thing you say, y'all, that's, that's the guy I saw at the restaurant or, you know what I mean? The, the neighbor lady or whatever. We don't think it's us. So yeah. th this is your job. How do we get people to realize the power that they have with recognition and appreciation? Well, a couple of things. Let me give you an example that I do in our workshops, our half day workshops that gets people to start thinking. And then I want to, I want to give you the number one excuse and how to overcome that. First of all, you know, and this goes right with what we were just talking about, this, this heart disease example. Let's say that I sit down with the doctor and he says, Jeff, I've done all your tests and you've got coronary heart disease. And I'm, I'm shocked, obviously. And he says, the best thing you can do is to start exercising. So I've got two options. I can start to exercise or I can just continue to do things the way I'm doing it. Just pass the chips and Ben and Jerry's. I'm going to live it up. <laughs> so let's say that the doctor's words are so poignant to me that the next morning I set my clock for 5.15 in the morning. It goes off. I get up and I, you know how it is. Oh my gosh, it's this new thing. And I got to put these sneakers on that I haven't worn since high school. I've got these sweats that now look like tights, you know, and <laughs> walking out of the front door. I'm going to do a little stretching. Oh, there goes my L5S1 disc. That's going to hurt a little bit later on. And so I leave the porch and I start to walk rather briskly and I'm, I'm warming up, right? I'm feeling pretty good. I've got memories of the way it used to be in high school. And this is starting to make me think that, hey, I can do this. And I start to jog, right? And I'm feeling pretty good about myself. The, the heart is starting to beat though a little bit. And, and all of a sudden I'm sweating rather quickly and I look at my watch and 29 seconds have gone by. Hey, right? You know, and, <laughs> and I stop and I walk back home and that was my first day. Yeah. But the second day comes and I do it again. And the third day comes, and I do it again. As I do it day by day and week by week, I notice that, hey, I'm not as sore anymore. I'm sleeping better. I've got more energy at work. My wife is telling me I don't snore at night anymore. You see, because what's happening here, Todd, is that what we are tasked to do, in this case by my doctor, is to go out and exercise. And it's the same thing with recognition programs. Most managers and leaders look at this as something on their to-do list to check off. It's a task. But once we see the real reason why we're doing Doing it, we move it from a task-based activity into a value-based activity. And that's what all of a sudden three weeks, four weeks of running does to me. No longer am I running. I'm a runner because I feel and am benefiting from the values of doing it. So, so that's one example I try to tell people to 
say, look, we need to move from looking at appreciation and recognition as a task or a to-do item and do it because we value it. And then the one other thing that I wanted to mention is that, you know, we hear all types of excuses as to why people don't recognize. And just let me ask you, Todd, you, you probably know the answer to this because you do a lot of studying on this topic. What do you think the number one excuse is that I hear as to why people don't recognize? It's probably the same excuse as to why people don't exercise. I don't have time. Bingo. Right. Exactly. Yay. So here's, here's, uh, here's let, let's get real here for a minute, okay? You're going to tell me that you've got time every night to take two or three hours and watch your favorite TV show and then take an hour the next morning to talk about it around the water cooler and you can't take the time to recognize somebody because here's the faulty assumption, Todd. People think that recognition is going to take a lot of time and that's false. So here's what I ask my groups to do. I say, look, first of all, everybody raise your hand who has a calendar and of course all the hands go up. Okay, great. It's an electronic calendar. Okay. Second question. How many of you have ever scheduled something on your calendar? And the hands go up. Great. Fantastic. So here's what I want you to do. I ask the group. I say, here's what you're going to do. You're going to schedule yourself a recurring appointment for 10 minutes a week, not a day, but a week. That's not even 1% of your work week. And what you're going to do is you're going to find a 10 minute slot of time. This could be at 10 in the morning. It could be two in the afternoon, whenever, where you're not going to be talking, texting, tweeting, or doing anything else that starts with a T. You're not going to be in a meeting. You're not going to be, uh, you know, trying to do anything else, but you're going to pause and you're going to take 10 minutes and think about the great work that has gone on around you the previous week. Somebody did something great as a one-off, or there has been somebody doing something consistently good. And I'll tell you, Todd, within the first 30 seconds, somebody's going to come to mind. And then you've got nine and a half minutes to write that person a thank you card. This is what I tell my groups to do to get them in the habit of recognizing. And then once they start to do that, it's just like the running. Once they've done it for a few weeks, they're not going to have to schedule it anymore because it's going to come to them because it's a value-based thing and it's no longer a task. Does that make sense, Todd? I love it. I love it. You know what? As you were as you were talking about that too, I, I was thinking about that 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 person, that manager, that that leader sitting there and um, trying to look for the good things, the good work going around them. And, and we all, like you said, we all can come up with something in 30 seconds, but the impact that, that it takes for them to go, oh yeah, you know, Jeff's doing some really great stuff. The impact that will actually have on Jeff is, is huge. And I, I just want, you know, the listener to, to think back to the times when someone recognized them. I mean, Jeff, you probably have a, a, a story that you remember that was extremely meaningful to you. Do you have a story where you remember being recognized for your humor, for your great work, for whatever it is that you want to be recognized for? Sure. Yeah. Right, right off the top of my of my head comes uh, the the time that I opened for Jay Leno. Mm -hmm. There's probably about I don't know. There's twenty probably twenty two hundred people there at this event, and and uh, uh, so I get to do fifteen minutes, warm the crowd up. And for me, it was it was one of the best performances I've ever had. I mean, all the jokes were clicking, people are laughing, people are crying, having a great time. And so I get done with my 15 minute set, and uh, Leno's going to come up and do probably an hour, an hour and 15 after me. And as I'm going off stage, I run right into Leno. He's back behind the curtain, and he had watched my whole set. And he says, "Hey, you're pretty funny." You know, he's got that <laughs> voice, whatever. And and I'm like, "Well, thank you." But then he said, "No, you you were really good out there." You were, uh, you know, that, that joke about your dog and then the one about your grandma and the lawnmower, all that stuff. He's, so he's being specific mm -hmm. and on the spot. This isn't a drive-by thank you. He starts asking me, hey, do you perform in any clubs around here, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I got to tell you, as a side note, I came so close to asking him if I could be on The Tonight Show. I don't know why. I think I was probably a little starstruck, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> but here's, here's the interesting thing about that little recognition moment. This is coming from the king of late night, mm -hmm. and I can't imagine getting better recognition from someone higher up the food chain in, in that type of, uh, of regard. But, but think about this, Todd. Most people think of, uh, that the greatest recognition moments are going to be an item. It's going to be cash. It's going to be uh, some sort of a memento. I did not get any physical recognition for that performance that night. So what this story also tells me, and I want the listeners to realize, is that 
the best and well-crafted, well-placed types of recognition, if they are constructed the right way, they are going to have the most meaning typically when you don't feel the need to include, oh, we got to make sure and give them the watch and give them, you know, the clock or whatever. And so, so don't think for one moment that, you know, that you have to have an item. Of course, we are going to have items. When somebody hits their one year, five year, 10 year, we want to do that. Mm -hmm. But you got to realize that the most powerful recognitions that I hear about is the simple thank you card that somebody has stuck up in their cubicle or the little memory that I just shared with you that has no connection to anything tangible whatsoever. I think it's interesting too that you that you called it out how Leno was specific about your jokes, meaning he was paying attention and then he related those specifics back to you. That's part of recognition at the work in work as well, right? Yeah, and, and that's probably the one thing, the one last thing I'd like to share with the listeners is mm -hmm. if you want to write a, a killer thank you card or a killer thank you statement, a thank you tweet, a thank you text, a thank you email, whatever it is, there has to be three things you got to do. Number one, use the person's first name. That's number one. Don't use nicknames. I, I see them all over the place, but use the person's first name. That's going to personalize it. Number two, be specific about something they did. Tell the story. If there's a problem, state what it was and how that person slayed that dragon and, and found the solution. So use their name, be specific. And number three, this is the one that hardly anybody ever thinks of. You want to connect what that person did to one of your core values. So if you've got core values like respect, trust, customer care, quality control, make sure you put that in that statement because that's going to affirm to the person that what they are doing is not just something that you like, but it's something that is valued by the company and the mission and vision statement of what you're after. Fantastic. Jeff, always a pleasure. If the audience wants to learn more about you, uh, the training you do, the speaking you do, where's the best place to, to learn more about Jeff Burke? Gosh, uh, uh, octanner.com slash Jeff Burke. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you want to? Yeah, any any questions whatsoever? Just shoot me an email. It's Jeff dot Burke. That's J E F F dot B I R K at octenor dot com. I'd be happy to uh, have a conversation with anyone. Thank you much, Jeff. Have a great day. Thanks, Todd. Would you like to be featured as a guest on Great Work Insights? If yes, we want to hear from you. Leave us a comment with who you are and what you're all about at www.octanner.com. Also, remember to rate, review, and subscribe to all our podcasts on iTunes. Now get out there and build something beautiful. It's your turn now.